Well, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Tuesday morning. Uh, this is Billy Trout, Manager of Taxpayer Education for the Tennessee Department of Revenue. Along with me today, I have Miss Katie Julian, and uh, she'll be walking you through our presentation here on special events and what you should be doing relative to that for uh, Tennessee taxes. So we'll welcome her in just a moment. Uh, along with me today, I have our Assistant Director of Taxpayer Services, Mr. Dan Vinson, online to give us some assistance, as well as the Supervisor of our Registration Unit to Ms. Martha Potter. And uh, all of us folks here are glad to be with you this morning. Uh, we do want you to uh, note the information on the slide here. And um, if you're having any audio or video difficulties, uh, please consult this. So certainly, I would think it would mostly be the audio difficulties that we seem to experience at different times with different types of equipment. Uh, and one very important thing that we want to point out here in the middle of this slide is that what you're seeing today is being recorded. And we will be posting this out on our website either later today or the first thing tomorrow. Uh, as well as copies of the uh, actual slides that you'll see Katie go through in just a few moments, okay? Um, at the end of the presentation, we'll also discuss how to get in contact with us at the Department of Revenue. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you'll know uh, the email address that you see right there towards the bottom of the screen, as well as our, our office phone number is available for you uh, at any particular time. So. Um, that's about it. I think we've got uh, quite a few folks online with us here today. And uh, again, this is a uh, presentation that is probably doesn't involve as many taxpayers as some of our other presentations do, but it's a specialized area that needs some attention. So we thought we would give you this opportunity to interact with us today about that. So with that, Katie, good morning to you. And I'll turn it over to you and let you go through the presentation here, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. And uh, thank you very much. Great, thank you, Billy. Welcome everyone to our webinar this month uh, on special events. As Billy said, this is a pretty uh, niche topic. If you are a vendor or a promoter, or a third party accountant or CPA. We hope that you find this information helpful. Some things have changed over the past few years with regards to special events, and we hope to be able to take some of the guesswork out of this process of registering and filing for special events. So as I mentioned, so there have been some changes over the past few years in special events. If you've been involved in any special events uh, for some time now, you may have noticed that Department of Revenue has a slightly different role. Back a few years ago, uh, you may have noticed that we had on-site tax enforcement staff from Department of Revenue at special events to uh, make sure that people were registering correctly and getting registered for the special event. We no longer have on-site tax enforcement or collections people at these events. Uh, the, the responsibility is placed onto the vendors and promo the promoters and the vendors to get registered for these events. And we're gonna go over today how you will go about doing that. Uh, we'll talk about the laws and rules, uh, some important definitions, due dates, rates, uh, possible exemptions, etc. We're going to go over registration and reporting requirements and filing instructions for the vendors and promoters. And then, like Billy said, uh, at the end of today's presentation, we're going to save some time to go over some specific questions that you all may have. Whether you're logging in from a PC or your mobile device, you'll notice there's an option to click on a chat. If you're on a PC, you'll see it in the bottom right hand screen. Uh, same with on a mobile device. Just click on that chat and throughout the presentation, feel free to put your questions into that chat and we will go through as many questions as we can when we get through with the presentation here. So. All right, the first thing we're going to go over is the, the definition of a special event. So to define that, it's an event held in ten a Tennessee community, usually lasting for a short time, which is 30 days or less. 
and features a theme such as arts and crafts, home show, holiday themed event, which is very apropos right now, this time of year, um, where vendors are available in a concentrated geographical location. So the players involved here, we've got vendors and promoters. First, we're going to go over the promoter responsibilities. An event promoter is a person or business that is hosting or overseeing the event. So the sales tax responsibilities for a promoter, uh, registering for a sales tax account for each individual event. If a sales tax account has already is already registered, then the promoter will simply contact us at revenue.support at tn.gov to add the special event location and dates. If a promoter has does not yet have a sales tax account registered, then you will submit a special event vendor registration application. We've got the link there, um, kind of a long hyperlink to be able to jot down but like Billy said we will have this posted on our website and you can uh, click on the, the link from the presentation that we post on our website there if you need to access that registration application. Uh, once registered for the event the promoter will then receive a letter from us that will provide some information we'll, we'll show you that letter here in a few moments and then you will be able to provide that letter to each of your vendors. In addition, a responsibility for promoters is to file and pay sales tax based on taxable sales. So uh, you'll notice in the little blue box there, special event location and date registration is not available on TINTAP at this point. So when you do send the application in or send us an email to add a special event, you'll just need to make sure that you that you add that that you include information about the location and dates. And then we will add the information on our back end here into our system to allow you to be able to um, file for that event. Here is a copy of the letter. It's quite small. The, the, you can't really read everything that's in there, but just to give you an idea of all the information that's in there is how to register for the special event with the department, how to file the tax returns via TINTAP. It'll give you the event's name, city, and state, the rate of the city where the event is being held, and a link to find the vendor's special event application for registration. So promoters, when you get this letter from us after you have registered the event with us, just provide it to your vendors and uh, it'll provide the information to them that they need to be able to move forward. So with that, the event vendors. Uh, event vendor is a person or business that rents space at an event to sell items, quite simply. The vendor sales tax responsibilities include uh, registering for sales tax account for each individual event. So if a sales tax account has already been registered for, if, you, if you're a vendor and you've participated in this same event in the past, you will simply just contact us at revenue.support at tn.gov to add the special event location and dates. And then again, we'll make that, that specific event location available to you to be able to file after the event uh, on TINTAP. If you have not yet registered for a sales tax event uh, account, you'll submit the special event vendor registration application. And here's a link here to that. And then of course, after the event, file and pay sales tax based on taxable sales. So for, with regards to filing, frequency and due dates, uh, the promoter or vendor is registered as a casual filer for the special event only. And when we say casual filer, that means that they're, they're just gonna be required to file for this event particularly. The return is due on the 20th of the month following the end of the special event. And you will need to contact the Tennessee Department of Revenue to create that filing period. And that is accomplished by, uh, I'm gonna go back one slide here. Uh, the, if you've already, went, once you contact us to let us know to add that special event location and dates, you've already taken care of that. But if you were to forget to do that before the event, definitely uh, do so at some point before the 20th of the month following so that we can make sure that we, uh, 
make that location available for you to file. So if a, if a promoter or vendor is registered as a regular filer, you'll file according to the frequency determined for your sales tax account, whether that be monthly or quarterly, and include the special event sales for the applicable, applicable period uh, on that location that'll show up for this specific event. Filing. All right, so to file, all filing is required on TINTAP. As I mentioned earlier, you can't register for the special event on TINTAP. You have to reach out to us directly, but you will file for the event on TINTAP. Uh, hopefully, if you have participated in any events or have a business where you already have a sales tax account, you're already familiar with TINTAP. It is our online filing portal. Uh, just some, some neat things about TINTAP that are listed here. You can schedule payments in advance. You can uh, automate, the system automatically corrects errors and uh, provides a, a avenue to do that. You can amend returns. You can access your returns, certificates and letters, and much more. So to file on TINTAP, you will uh, log in. First, if you don't already have a TINTAP account, you'll need to create a TINTAP logon and then add access to your accounts. Uh, I've got some images here. In order to get information about how to create a TINTAP logon, how to add access to accounts and other information about TINTAP, if you're on our homepage, which is tn.gov forward slash revenue, you'll uh, click on that revenue help questions icon there and then click on Tennessee Taxpayer Access Point or TINTAP and from there this is just a, a brief snapshot of some of the articles that we have but these are the basics um, about how to uh, just general TINTAP how-to videos, general information about TINTAP, how to log in, registration, payments, tax returns and we've got some great uh, videos on our TINTAP revenue help section as well. So once you are logged into TINTAP and have already added access to your sales tax account, this is a snapshot of what it'll look like to you. You'll just simply, in order to file, click on view slash file returns. And uh, you can also just click on file now if you are ready to file for a current period. To get more information about how to complete a sales tax return, we have some great resources out there. We did a webinar just last month, actually, on completing a Tennessee sales tax return. Uh, as I mentioned in our TINTAP how-to videos section on revenue help, there's also a video about filing a sales tax return. In order to access that webinar, and as well as the webinar that we're having today and any other webinars we've had in the past and to register for future webinars, you'll simply go to our web, our homepage, tn.gov forward slash revenue and click on taxpayer education. There are lots of great resources there for you, including this webinar from last month on completing a sales tax return. So this is, pretty much wraps up the presentation portion of special events. Uh, we're going to jump into chat here, but just to give you some resources here, again, as Billy mentioned, uh, if you've got specific account-related questions, please email those to us at revenue.support at tn.gov. And as always, feel free to call our support center at any point at 615-253-0600 and we have uh, call center staff available Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 Central Time, um, except for on state holidays. Uh, we look forward to answering your questions all the time. I know that some of this tax stuff can be very confusing, and if you can't find the information on our website, uh, please reach out to us. If we've got time here at the end of this webinar, I will show you some other great resources on our website that can answer some questions without you having to call us or email us. But again, we welcome uh, your questions at any time. So with that, I'll leave this slide up as we go into a kind of question and answer portion here with Billy and with Martha, a subject matter expert from our registration unit to answer your questions that you've sent in to us. Billy, have we got any questions at this point? 
Yeah, uh, we had an interesting one from Judy. Um, she asked us uh, in chat about the state sales tax on food items. So uh, clearly, uh, the, if you're selling food items, which are generally unprepared food, things that you would buy at a grocery store normally, uh, outside of things like candy and things of that nature too, if they meet the definition of, of food, then they do qualify for the reduced sales tax rate, and that's the state sales tax rate of 4%, but that local rate applies too. One of the things I was thinking about while you were talking, Katie, that was probably worth mentioning, and, um, and of course, we'll let Martha jump in here as well as she determines, but, you know, when you set up these special events locations, you know, you can go from show to show selling stuff and all that. Well, that local tax rate is going to be different wherever you go, okay? So a lot of places have gone to the maximum 2.75% local sales tax rate, okay? So it makes it pretty easy. But some places have a lower sales tax rate, 2.25 or 2.0 even down to one and a half, believe it or not, there's still a few places out there for the very low rate. So what you need to do is you need to be very careful and make sure that you're collecting that local sales tax at the same rate as the place where you're reporting. And if you don't know what that rate is, you go out to our website on sales tax and you can look up all the local rates and it'll tell you what that rate is. Or just call us, like uh, Katie said, our phone number on screen here, pop us an email, we'll look it up for you. No problem at all. Glad to tell you to how to do that. The one thing so, you don't want is you don't Billy, want Billy, with that, if I could interrupt for just- Please I'm do, sorry. please do. Just gonna interrupt. Once, the, once they've registered for the event and the location is available in Tintap, the Tintap the system automatically applies that rate Correct. to- the sales. So it's not something you have to have in your in your brain while you're filing the return. The system does that for you, but like Billy right. said, the 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 rates are available to you on our website if you're just curious to know what they are. Right. But here's the challenge, Katie. So what if you were uh, at an event and you were used to collecting, I don't know, two and a quarter percent. So that's what you always collected from your home location, right? But now you're at a place where the local rate is 2.75, but and you just collected just the the two and a quarter percent from your customers. Well, guess what? Now you're left holding the bag. Okay, and yes, you do have to pay right. at the higher rate, so that's going to come out of your pocket. So you don't want that to happen. You want to pass that sales tax along to your customers as you traditionally would. So, so that's a that's one thing to just kind of keep in mind. It's not a big deal sort of thing, but it's just something to kind of keep in mind, you know, as far as that goes too. So um, I was going to ask Martha to uh, unmute and uh, tell you uh, first of all, good morning, Miss Martha. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. How about y'all? <clears throat> We're doing great. So. You know, you're the supervisor over the area that handles this sort of thing. And I was kind of wondering if you could just kind of share the thing that you see the most often. What's what's like a common thing that you see more or less on a daily basis on this stuff? Um, basically, on the application, um, and I, I know we have a couple of those questions in the in the chat over here, and I and I hope to kind of touch on those as I'm I'm um, explaining it. Sometimes the promoters are not registered with the department, um, and if they're not, then the vendors would just still need to complete the vendor form, the vendor application. They just will not be able to provide us the promoter's location ID or sales tax account number. Um, so, you know, we, we get that question a lot. Um, you know, hey, I don't know what the promoter's location ID number is and whatnot, but, you know, we, we should still be able to have the location of the event, the event date, the begin and the end date of that event, um, and also the name of the event. We we need to know that because we basically 
set the vendor up either with um, a special event account um, and then they file just casually just when they do the events that's why we say hey call us and also they will provide us the promoter's location ID if that promoter has registered. That way we can link everything together. It does not mean the promoter is responsible to collect and remit the tax. The vendor still has to remit it. It just kind of helps us keep track of what vendors are at what event. Martha, let me interrupt you and ask you this question. Would you rather people contact us before the event or after the event? I'm, on, I'm going to answer one question here and say, don't wait to the 20th of the following month to contact us when you're getting ready to file because then you're on fire and we have problems. You know, you know, don't want to don't want to create yourself a problem. But what's your best advice? If you know that you're going to attend this event and you already know all of the information, go ahead and contact us. Um, that way we can make sure that everything is set up properly with your account. We have everything, you know, in line and order. We can go ahead and make that period available for you. So after that event, if you wanted to go ahead and, and file that return, you can do so. Um, a lot of times if you wait until after you run the risk of if we have a high call volume, you know, you may be on, on line for a little bit or you, you know, we, we find an issue with your account that may take us a little longer to get everything straightened out to where you're able to file that return. So we don't want anybody to to file late and, you know, then be assessed a penalty or something for not filing on time. Yeah, and Martha, do you think that email is a better choice than phone calls? Because they can put all that information about mm -hmm. the location and the address and all the start dates and end dates and all that. I do. I think that, you know, any of those requests can be sent to on the screen. It's the revenue.support at tn.gov. You just provide us your, you know, your sales tax account number, the date of the event. If you have that promoter's location ID, you know, provide all of that information and, and we can go out there and, and get everything submitted and active for you. Okay, very good. Martha, were there any other things in chat that you wanted to touch uh, on yourself or did we want to go to something else? There was, I think I did see one. Dale, I hope I, um, I answered yours. Sometimes promoters are, we like for the promoters to register with us. Um, so if for some reason they, they don't get set up with us in time or something, then all you just need to do is submit an application um, the special event application for each event that you do. Um, if you've already done an event, then you just need to know that you need to provide us the dates, all of that information so we can do that. But if it's a whole new event that you've never attended before, you do need to um, apply to get a new location ID for that, that specific event. Okay, very good, very good. You know, one thing that I had looked up before our event started today was some special stuff in sales tax law regarding uh, admission charges and things like that to these different places. So, you know, uh, if you go to an event, sometimes the promoter will charge an admission charge, and those are generally taxable, but but there are some exceptions, and I'm not going to go through this laundry list of information, and most of this information is posted out on our website, but just for your general information, did you know that if you're a county fair or an agricultural fair, uh, the amusement tax, which is the equivalent of sales tax, by the way, uh, does not apply to those admissions. So, so that's sort of a good thing to know about there, too. 
also, um, if the event is being run by a nonprofit organization that's exempt under IRS code section 501C, then uh, the uh, admission charges are also not taxable. So that's, uh, that's an important thing to remember as well. Um, you know, clearly we, we get a lot of specific questions about different things. So you, you definitely, if you have any questions about that, if you'll pop us an email or give us a call, uh, we'll dig for you and find out uh, the exact answer based on your fact set. But I think it's really important to try to get it right up front. Of course, those of you that are online with us today or watching this recording, recording later on uh, are trying to understand the law and trying to comply, and we appreciate that very much. But I uh, thought I'd just kind of throw that out there for some general information there too. So Martha. Hey, what, Billy, I was just going to let you know too real quick. I threw a link to information about local oh. sales tax rates into the chat. So thank you, Katie. Had some That's questions great. about that. That's great. So it's right there for you too. So, so Martha, let me ask you another question, please, ma'am. So if you could just wave your magic wand and have people do something that they are either doing wrong or they're not doing at all, what would you recommend that they change? How about that for a question? <laughs> wow. Um... <laughs> would it be the timeliness of your request? I'm just thinking out loud because when we get requests in, you know, we get hundreds of requests for assistance a, a day for, via phone or email and uh, various other methods in the Department of Revenue. Um, the the one thing that I see personally, and you may agree with me or not, Martha, but I, I think the biggest thing is to make sure that you give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Okay, so if it's coming up on the 20th and it's, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon of the 20th, that's probably not a really great time to try to solve your problem. You know, maybe if you can do that like a week or so ahead, that would be a great thing too. One other thing too, um, about 10 tap, that's very cool. If you haven't figured this out yet, is you can file your taxes, okay? And then you can schedule your payment to come out on the due date, okay? So in other words, you don't really have to wait to the last minute to do your taxes just so you don't have to send us the money at that point. Just change the due date or excuse me, the scheduled date on your payment to be timely as of the last day, if that's what you choose to do. And then uh, that way you can kind of put everything to rest and you won't have to have any stress about it. So that you can use across for any type of tax filing with us. Katie, are you seeing anything else we need to discuss today? Let's see here. A question from Dale, if my account is set up as regular, so you're a regular filer, do I still need to set up special event info for each event? Um, the answer to that is, is yes, you still would need to register the specific event so that we can add that location to your consolidated sales tax return. You would still go in uh, on your monthly, if you're a monthly filer, uh, go in and, and file, but you'll see a special location ID for the special event, but you would be required to file it at the, at the regular frequency that you're used to filing. And I think we talked about the fact that that's a, on a casual basis, so we would make that period available. So if you went to a, a Christmas sales event, you know, in November, of this year, which was very typical, of course, of where we are right now, then um, that period for November would be available, but it wouldn't show up in subsequent months. Now, next year, when you get ready to come back to that event, then you'll need to give us a call or send us an email and say, hey, I'm going back to the Christmas in the country event, and it's at the same place it was last year. Can you make my November period available? And lo and behold, like magic, we do it. It's so easy, especially since it's already out there. We just have to do a couple of clicks on our end and you're ready to roll. So again, not on the 20th though, right? 
So, <laughs> you know, help us, help us help you. How about that? All right. So, Great. Billy, we have another question. Um, I'm an event organizer. Should I charge sales tax on the fee charged for renting booths to vendors? Um, it, it's my understanding that unless you are uh, registered as a 501c business, then sales for the fee to boot, to rent a booth at an event are subject to sales tax. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is correct. That, that is absolutely right. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, yeah, uh, that's certainly something that we need to talk about. So, you know, basically the, these events and the different things that go on here have different nuances about them. But as far as booth rentals go, uh, they're pretty much taxable unless you're a 501c3 uh, or a 501c exempt organization. Okay. And of course, tax law in Tennessee allows uh, different 501c3 organizations to have two uh, tax events or periods per year, not to exceed 30 days in each event, where they can make sales of tangible personal property so that they do not have to uh, be worried about collecting sales tax on those items of tangible personal property. So if you are a 501c3, and you have an annual event, let's say, I don't know, a fun run, you know, this stuff happens all the time, or maybe a craft sale uh, once a year, you know, to support your organization, that's fine. Uh, as long as that event is doesn't exceed 30 days, uh, and it's no more than two events a year, uh, the Department of Revenue doesn't ask that you collect tax for that. Okay. What else do we need to talk about? Anybody, ladies, do you see anything else we need to address here? Some of these special issues that a couple of people have brought up here, we won't be talking about. Uh, I know someone had a question about single article tax. We would ask you to email that uh, back into us uh, as our discussion today is not about single articles. If we don't see any other issues, um, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's webinar. And I want to thank uh, Katie and Martha and our assistant director, Mr. Dan Vinson, for being online with us today. And just want to thank you as participants also for joining us. Again, the materials will be posted to the website either later today or tomorrow in the section where you registered for the webinar. You'll see this information there. We do ask if you have any follow-up questions that you send them into revenue.support at tn.gov or give us a phone call at the number that you see on your screen right now. Any final comments? So, Billy, I, I, yes, sir. I put a link to our tax webinars page into the chat. And just to let y'all know, if you're familiar with these monthly webinars that we hold, they are always on the last Tuesday of the month. And next month in December, that actually falls in, during that week between Christmas and New Year's. And we've gotten some questions. Are we still going to have the webinar next month? The answer is yes, uh, pending any, any crazy, crazy uh, situations happening. We will always have the monthly webinar on the last Tuesday of the month. You can uh, follow that link that I just put into the chat to register for next month's webinar, which mm -hmm. is on reporting sales tax by destination. We do have some uh, changes coming in early 2022 regarding out-of-state businesses selling to Tennessee customers and some, some changes that are going to be implemented, and that's going to be a, a really great webinar. I know it's it's an interesting week with a lot of people being off the week between Christmas and New Year's, but we hope you'll join us for that one. Um, some, some really important and good information coming, coming next month. And we don't have it on our, let's see here if we have our I will say January Janu one. Yeah, January we do have out there, Katie. Uh, and, and we it's do. And it's going to be our 10-tap overview. Uh, so you, if you need to learn a little bit more about what 10-tap can do for you and uh, make your your tax paying life better. Uh, just come and check us out uh, at the end of um, January also, 2022. That sounds weird to say 2022, doesn't it? But uh, anyway, it's coming up. I, know, I, have, to, you I know have to think it. about it for a moment. <laughs> right, right. Well, I want to thank Katie and Martha and everyone uh, for your participation today. And uh, 
again, we thank you so much and uh, just let us know how we can help you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Have a good one. Okay. Bye bye.